Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another episode of Unfiltered Talk. So um, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time and I never really got around to it. And I've been really nervous about making it, if I'm being honest, because this video is one that could be seen as very negative and I don't like making negative videos. But today I'm going to be talking about a specific superhero movie. And I think that the success of this specific superhero movie might have killed superhero movies. So let's dive into this. So first thing I want to go ahead and say, quick disclaimer, um, I do not like making negative videos on this channel, and that's part of the reason why it's taking me so long to make this video. Um, I don't think that superhero movies are really dying. I think that superhero movies are going to be just fine, especially with James Gunn taking over the DC universe, and especially with uh, Marvel kind of learning their lessons from this last year being a pretty bad year for superhero movies. Um, I think that superhero media is definitely going to continue to thrive, and I think that this upcoming year, Marvel only having the one movie and DC only having the one movie is going to be a really good sign for superhero superhero related content and um, I definitely think that the future of superhero movie is superhero movies are looking really bright so um that being said this video is mostly just going to be me kind of talking about something that I kind of noticed that happened after one specific movie and um, I could be completely wrong about this this is just my thoughts and opinions and I've kind of been thinking this for years so we're gonna finally dive into this so some of you guys might be thinking what is the movie he is talking about I don't know yet if I'm putting it in the thumbnail or not but um, what movie killed superhero movies, according to me? What movie do I think uh, potentially put kind of the knife in the uh, chest of superhero movies, in a sense? Um, for me, I think that one of the movies that kind of led to the downfall of superhero movies is the movie Thor Ragnarok. Now, here's my thing. I'm a big fan of Thor Ragnarok. I'm a big fan of all the Thor movies, actually. I think that the first two Thor movies are incredibly underrated movies. I think that they're really good and they're a whole lot of fun. And I love that this was our first glimpse into the cosmic side of the MCU. And um, I like the fact that they follow along with Greek mythology, not Greek, North mythology relatively well. And that uh, they really do a good job of like playing to actual historical things as well as just playing towards the comics. But um, something about Thor Ragnarok that um, was very new for superhero media was it had a lot of pretty much slapstick comedy. There was a lot of improv in this movie. I think that Taika Waititi and Thor... I said Thor, Chris Hemsworth, um, kind of collectively admitted that um, about 70% of the script and 70% of the movie and dialogue was pretty much improv. They knew how they wanted a scene to start and they knew how they wanted a scene to end. And other than that, they kind of just wanted to let the actors play around and kind of interact with each other and let the scene just kind of flow naturally and try to create these conversations that would make the viewers laugh, right? And I think that it worked really well. And I think that overall, they were able to balance the comedy with the actual overarching story that was going on with it and the worst character arc of slowly becoming the King of Asgard. And um, I think that it was a really, really great movie for that sense. But I think that the humor might have taken it a bit too far. Okay, so to get into this, um, I just want to go ahead and say, I know that Thor Ragnarok was not the first funny movie in the MCU, and I know that a lot of the MCU movies had a lot lighter tone, and that's part of the reason why movies like Justice League kind of didn't do very well, because they were taking characters who are usually very serious, and they were making them really quippy. Batman was making quips that didn't really fit Batman's character. Um, the Flash ended up being a really nervous, antsy kind of teenager, which doesn't make sense for the Flash character either. And um, they started just making really poor decisions on how certain superhero characters were going to be portrayed. Instead of sticking to the comics, they were trying to make characters that usually aren't lighthearted and funny and they're making them lighthearted and funny. And I think that this movie is definitely one step towards the right direction here. Um, if you look at the box office numbers, the first two Thor movies didn't do incredibly well amongst some of the earlier MCU movies. Um, I think that Thor The Dark World had a relatively decent box office considering a lot of people think it's one of the worst movies in the MCU. But when Ragnarok came out, it very much skyrocketed the entire Thor trilogy. Um, the Ragnarok movie was very close to hitting a billion dollars in the uh, box office. I say very close. I think it was at 860 million or something like that. So it, it still technically had a pretty decent amount of, you know, money to get there. But um, it did really well in the box office as far as the Thor movies specifically are concerned. And um, I think that a big part of that was a lot of the casual viewers who are going to see superhero movies who didn't really know a lot about the story, didn't really care about the interconnectivity or anything like that. But they wanted to see of funny superhero movies. The Thor Ragnarok trailer came out. It was filled with a lot of jokes. People knew that Chris Hemsworth was a very comedic actor and his comedic timing was great. People saw Jeff Goldblum as the grandmaster and thought, this movie looks like it's going to be a comedy. So people like my parents, who don't care about superhero movies at all, went to see this movie. They laughed their butt off. They thought it was great. And then it kind of created a lot of word of mouth amongst older audiences who didn't really care about superhero media, but thought that this was a great comedy and you should go watch it because it's really funny. And um, it kind of sparked something that DC really kind of noticed. And they were like, huh, 
we can just kind of have like slapstick comedy in our movies and it'll make it a little bit better and it'll make it so that casual viewers will enjoy the movie more. And I don't think that that's a true statement at all. I think that um, casual viewers go to see good movies as well as comedies and um, turning a superhero movie into just a straight up comedy doesn't work when specific characters are dealing with kind of more traumatic experiences and stuff like that. And um, I think that one of the first movies that I saw that DC kind of messed up this tone a little bit was the first Shazam movie. The first Shazam movie, obviously kind of more aimed towards kids because it is a bunch of kids as superheroes, but the first Shazam movie, we dealt with Billy Batson, somebody who has had a really rough time as a kid. Um, he lost his mother and uh, he never really knew his father and he's been bouncing around from foster home to foster home to foster home. And um, he's a very troubled kid. He, he is getting in trouble at school, he's getting suspended and um, he's a bit of a troublemaker. He's starting to have issues with the law and he has an officer who's kind of keeping a lookout for him. And um, it has a lot of darker tones in it. But the second that Zachary Levy appears and we see you know him in his shazam form he becomes very goofy he becomes very childish and i think that a lot of that is very similar to how chris hemsworth was playing thor and thor ragnarok i think that um when we first see thor and thor ragnarok he's very goofy he's joking around he's telling a story to a skeleton and um it works for his character because he had just spent a lot of time with tony stark on earth so he's gotten some more humor he's got some more sarcasm and stuff like that but it's really weird when other characters in other universes start having this comedy to them that wasn't there before. I think one of my main problems I have with the original Shazam movie specifically is the young actor, Asher Angel I believe is his name, who plays Billy Batson, is playing it very dark, playing it very seriously, and um, it's because there's a lot of emotional trauma that's going on in this role. And then we switch to Zachary Levy and he is not serious for a single moment in the entire movie and it really bothers me because tonally different, th those two characters are very tonally different and they feel like different characters because of that. But now I do realize that it does kind of sound like I'm just saying that um, Marvel trying to be super funny made it where DC is trying to be super funny and DC is copying Marvel, whatever. I'm not trying to spread that because I definitely think that this affected a lot of MCU movies as well because a lot of the current MCU movies kind of focus on humor a little bit more than they should. Um, for instance, uh, in my opinion, pretty much all of the... Uh, Spider-Man movies have done a lot of like really childish humor and um, I don't think that the people writing those movies really fully understand how people in high school interact with each other. I think that um, a lot of the stuff that they've done with like Flash Thompson as a character to try to make him more of a bully, he's just kind of the butt of every single joke, which I think is really a disservice to the character of Flash Thompson in the, char in the comics who is literally the bane of Spider-Man's existence, whereas nowadays he just calls him stuff like... Um, I don't remember what it was. It was like Penis Parker or something like that. Anyways, he, he gives him bad, stupid nicknames and stuff like that, but he doesn't do anything that's really like bullying. He's not doing anything that's really tough on Peter Parker. He's not doing anything that's actually getting under Peter Parker's skin. And it really bothers me because that entire trilogy, they have Flash Thompson as a character and they don't utilize him correctly at all. And I think a big part of that is that Taika Waititi introduced a lot of Marvel creators and executives that, oh, we can just make really funny movies. And because of that, John Watts, uh, well, I'm, I was about to blame John Watts. He's just the director of the Spider-Man movies. And I think for the most part, he did a relatively good job. Um, but the people writing these Spider-Man Homecoming movies were like, okay, yeah, let's just add in a bunch of jokes. Let's make it super funny because it's a bunch of teenagers. Obviously they're going to be really funny. And, um, a lot of the comedy, in my opinion, in Spider-Man Far From Home is what makes it not as great of a Spider-Man movie. In my opinion, it's one of the worst Spider-Man movies ever made. And it sucks because we have a lot of great moments in it. We have Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, who is fantastic in it. And I think that his design and everything looks great. Um, we have, in my opinion, one of the best live action Spider-Man suits of all time. And we got a lot of great move moments with the illusion tech and stuff like that. But um, there's a lot of jokes in there as well that ruin and undermine very serious moments. Um, there is the moment at the end of the movie or whatever where Peter closes his eyes or whatever, lets his uh, spider sense take over, and he goes and he beats Mysterio or whatever. And then it's almost immediately followed up with him calling it the Peter Tinkle, which is one of the most aggravating jokes in the entirety of the MCU. It drives me insane. It was funny the first time they said it and then they just kept doing it and kept doing it. And I think a lot of Marvel's comedy has really became repetitive and redundant. And um, a lot of the stuff like in the Ant-Man movie, 
Ant-Man being called the wrong person multiple times. Ant-Man of the Wasp Quantumania, he gets called Spider-Man. And then later they call, they try to compare him to Thor at one point. And it's like, it's annoying. It's not great. Thor Love and Thunder is also really bad with this. The orgy joke. Um, it's almost like Taika Waititi had no other idea what kind of jokes Greek gods could make. So he was like, let's do the orgy joke again. And let's do it again. And let's do it again. And then also some of the jokes with the screaming goats in that movie also got really repetitive and really redundant really fast. Um, and I just think that Thor Ragnarok was one of the first movies that really took the comedy to that next level and showed superhero movies that, oh my god, yeah, if we make these comedies, they're gonna be fantastic. And, um, it has slightly implemented, um, comedy as, a uh, way too much of a focus in these movies, in my opinion. So I just have one more movie that I want to talk about, um, and this was one of the ones that was kind of disappointed me the most. Um, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, uh, was following up, in my opinion, one of my favorite DC movies of all time. The first Aquaman movie, I think it's great. I think that the portrayal of Aquaman in that movie is really well done. I think that Jason Momoa does a good job fitting the character, and I kind of like it because it's kind of like how the Spider-Man Home Trilogy is us slowly getting the build to the Spider-Man that we're used to, and then it ends with, you know, Spider-Man being the regular Peter Parker he would expect him to be in all the movies. Um, Aquaman 1 kind of does that for Aquaman. You're used to the very serious Aquaman. You're used to the one who's the king of the seas, somebody who's very serious, somebody who's very noble. And in this movie, they take Jason Momoa from being a very silly, goofy loner, somebody who's an alcoholic and has a lot of problems feeling like he doesn't fit in anywhere, and it makes him the king of Atlantis, and it gives him this very glorious story that ends with him being king and then we're like okay where is this gonna go where is he gonna go from here he's gonna be the king of atlantis he's gonna have to save atlantis from something he's gonna have to take a lot of responsibilities he's a dad now that's even more responsibilities he's gonna have to take on where is this gonna go and this movie ended up just being a bunch of slapstick comedy with brothers doing banter after banter after banter jason momoa just giving bad one-liner after bad one-liner after terrible jokes that were all stale that all fell flat almost immediately i understand that his chemistry with patrick wilson was very good and i understand that they had a couple of moments that were very entertaining but overall this movie was just a giant comedy fest on top of an overcompilated plot which had to pause to literally tell us what's going on in the movie because we had no idea and the entire time aquaman who just had an incredible arc in his first movie to become king is acting like a giant man child and he's having to have everything explained to him by other people who should have been king and then the movie ends with the brother who had spent the entire movie basically mentoring aquaman and proving that he's a much better king and he's much more fit for being the king of atlantis and it ends with him being on the run and not being the new king of atlantis and him just telling aquaman you know what i think you're ready to be the ruler that you were always meant to be that's what the first movie was for not what this movie was for. And also, Aquaman didn't learn shit in Aquaman 2. And it is painful to me. And I feel like part of the problem is, and Jason Momoa has made it clear on social media that he's close to Chris Hemsworth. They kind of have like this working relationship where they can make each other the butt of the jokes and they kind of recognize that Aquaman and Thor are relatively similar characters. And I think that Aquaman realized, oh, Chris Hemsworth gets to play a very silly version of his character. Let me start doing that. And I think that that is part of the problem with this i think that the first aquaman movie came out before well it finished filming and all that production stuff before thor ragnarok but after seeing his performance in thor ragnarok and realizing oh he can be more silly and then same thing with like thor love and thunder and thor and endgame is a little silly and i think that um aquaman jason momoa realized oh i could just be a little silly guy and uh that's not the case and it really really bothers me um but yeah all in all um, I don't actually think that it's Thor Ragnarok's fault. What? I don't actually think it's Thor Ragnarok's fault, but I do think that it being as successful as it was and it being pr almost primarily a comedy did kind of ruin a lot of other movies that came after it. I think that Thor Love and Thunder being pretty much entirely a comedy ruined and wasted one of the most interesting Thor villains in the comics. Like, Gore the God Butcherer is somebody who potentially could have been, like, a trilogy-long villain. He's so interesting. He always combats Thor's, you know mindset and there's a lot of interesting stuff with the comics of Thor losing his worthiness throughout this and kind of realizing oh my god I think Gore is right because he kind of also gets betrayed by the gods and he realizes that the gods are pretty terrible and they don't do a lot of good things and whenever we see Thor go to Omnipotent City and get treated like shit by all the other gods he never once stops and think thinks huh 
maybe gore is onto something and that bothers me so much that they have decided to make so much jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes that they decide to completely ignore very important plot lines that would make the movies 10 times more impactful and 10 times more enjoyable but that being said that was it for this video guys thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video um i love and appreciate you guys so much for watching i'm sorry if i went on for way too long this is a rant that i've had bottled up since probably about four years ago uh not four years ago probably about like four months ago and then it got 10 times worse when i watched aquaman 2 and uh, now aquaman 2 has been out for over a month i uh have been settling on these thoughts for a while but yeah that being said i'm gonna have now peace out Bow, 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 bow. Back at it again, but that's a relevant flow. So smooth, they calling me Mr. Elegant. Like an elephant, I got a long nose. Like a president, I've got a few hoes. Swift with a stutter, I'm smooth like butter. Don't see it coming when I slip undercover. Like a big dog, but I don't bite. I'm still a big broad, I'd win that fight. Come match you and I knock out your l l lights.